What is good guys and welcome to today's video. You can probably tell behind me but we are at another car yard here in Japan. And I love doing these kinds of videos to give you guys an insight, especially if you're wanting to export one of these cars out of Japan, exactly what they're selling for here locally at car dealerships. I'm not talking about auction prices or anything like that. They should obviously be substantially like lower than what they're selling for here. But it gives you an idea of what the market value is here so that when you're trying to get a car exported out of the country and get it into your country, that you're not being ripped off or overcharged or anything like that. The car yard that we're at today is called GT Net and it's a pretty popular car yard in Japan amongst car enthusiasts because they're known for only selling sports cars things like GTRs, RX-7s and S15 Silvias all that kind of stuff right and as you can see there's no short supply of GT86s now we were here I think about over a year now and everything in this yard is completely changed they go through stock quite frequently here and that's a good thing about revisiting car yards and stuff is you get to see the differences and like if you go back and look at the older video and stuff like that you'll see the difference in pricing as well anyways that aside they have some really nice gems here if you know your rx7s you should know what that badge means this thing is clean as but before we get distracted by anything else you see there's a lot of gtrs in the back there's a lot of 34 gtrs so let's definitely go through everything and check it all out before we take a look at some epic cars, I want to tell you about today's sponsor of the video, and that is Speed Kana. Speed Kana is an awesome company that has an online store, and the owner himself is a car enthusiast who makes all of the designs. So it's literally things for car enthusiasts made by car enthusiasts. So I know you guys are going to love it. They make a whole bunch of apparel stuff, but mainly right now they've just released some new prints. And check out how awesome this looks. I got a gunmetal gray 32 GTR, and then on this side, I got the limited edition blue 33 GTR and then up the top where Godzilla belongs, the top of all of them, we've got the 34 GTR in midnight purple. Every single one of these you can get in every OEM color that Nissan ever released and that is sick. Not only are the prints super high quality that have thoroughly impressed me by the way, but what I love about these is it's something that you can put on your wall and see every day. So all of that aside, guys, go check out Speed Kana, link in the description. We've also got a nice discount code there for you, Semit. So go get yourself some cool prints. The owner has a whole bunch more other Nissan models and other car models in the works. So go check it out and uh, yeah, let's get back to today's video. I'm gonna start in this back corner here and we're gonna work our way all the way up there and just try to skim through as much as we can. One thing that I kind of spotted was this, which I believe is a, either an FTO or GTO. I can't remember exactly what they're called here in Japan. Now these, this doesn't have a price tag on this. GT86 is under negotiation, but this thing's here. Oh wow, that's actually cheap. They only want about, uh, it'll be about 11 grand USD. I'm only gonna do USD prices because right now, uh, AUD is all over the place. I think what I love about this thing is that it's literally on GTR wheels. <laughs> 34 GTR wheels to be more precise. These things are pretty cool. Pretty sure they've got a 1J in there. Testarossas, guys. They're pretty interesting. A lot of people drift these over here. This GT86 selling for 14 grand. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's a couple Priuses in here too. Actually, I've kind of been wondering how much are Priuses in Japan secondhand? Yo, that's pretty cheap. Nine grand. This one over here is about five grand. Jeez, okay. Maybe we can get a Prius and do some handbrake entries into somewhere with some McDonald's trays. <laughs> There's a fair few GT86s here and BRZs. So I think we're gonna kind of skim past these and we might take a look at them later on. But let's take a look here. We've got this white RX-7. Doesn't look like there's any pricing on that at all. It actually looks like it's only recently just come in from the auctions or something. But over here, got a 370Z. Is it manual? That's the most important thing. Yes, it is. No, I lied. It's an auto. Damn it. I do love these wheels, though. The 370Z wheels look so good on their chassis. It's done 53,000 kilometers, and they want about $15,000 for it. And then up here, we got another one. They want about 11 grand for this one. This one's auto as well, and it's done nearly 100,000 kilometers. So a lot of people always say like, Sam, why don't you just get a 350Z or, or a 370Z? They're cheap. They're not cheap in Japan. They're nowhere near as cheap as they should be. 15 grand for this one, auto as well, done 59,000 kilometers. Another one here for 16 grand. This one's done 50,000 Ks, and this one, is also an auto. Yo, I haven't seen one of these Salikas in a while. $3,000 for this bad boy. 
It's got one game. Why not, right? Manual. The only thing about these is I really wish that Toyota brought out a, a GT like four version of this Celica. I thought it, uh, think that would have looked boss. But anyways, I was a big fan of Celicas back in uh, my early teenage years. I love the GT4. Good chassis. All right, so let's look at this Spirit R RX7, which is the cleanest RX7 I've ever seen. I think factory OEM wheels still. The paint is immaculate. The fact that it even still has those Spirit R badges is pretty amazing too because they're like one of the first things to fall off. <laughs> so nice! Ugh. He's even got like door guards and stuff on there. It's hard to see the interior, but this thing is clean. Full leather, red leather interior. It's absolutely beautiful. And then over here is a 350Z, no pricing in the window. Nice Colky S14. 35 GTR. Trying to make sure we're not missing anything up the back there. I think there's an S15. Ooh, some more RX7s. Yo, this one's nice. It's got a nice bridge reclinable in there. So they want 27 grand for this one. It's done 80,000 kilometers. Whew. She's pricey. 20 grand for this one. RX7s have really been going up in price though, so I'm not surprised. 20 grand for this one. 98,000 kilometers. RZ edition. Those wings really do look nice. Mm, nice BBS wheels on there as well. That'd be a really good car for someone to like kind of polish up. Turn out really nice. Interior has um, covers over the seats. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's weird. This one's 35 grand, geez, wow. RSR 63,000 kilometers, that is low mileage. And the interior looks incredibly clean. Very nice, so nice work wheels as well. Can't go wrong with that. Now I spotted this. 23 grand for this S15. They really are going up in price, but this thing's only done 53,000 kilometers. So to give you guys an idea, my S15 only had 35,000 kilometers on it when I got it from Okachan. Bear in mind, mine was a purpose-built drift car initially that we then turned back into a street drift car. Ooh, very nice. Especially considering it's a genuine Type R. It's already got a nice bride reclinable in there, or brid. Apexi Power FC, so it's got some nice bits. Six speed, of course, S15. Very nice, it's nice and clean. Can't go wrong with a good S15. All right, let's move over here. JZA80 Supra. This one is $31,000. And what are we looking at here? It says only 3,000 kilometers. Manual, non-turbo. There you go. That's crazy, man. Like, these were selling for $3,000 in Australia when I first left Australia five years ago. You could literally get an NA manual JZ A80 Super for $3,000. Like, it needed work. I'm not saying they were in perfect clean condition. But, yeah, they were, like, getting... Like, you couldn't even give them away. This thing is clean. $29,000 for this RX-7. Full CUS body kit's done 65,000 kilometers. Jeez, man, I feel so bad for anyone who's like digging into the FDs. FD RX-7s are really climbing up. Another S15. No pricing on this one, though. And this GTR here. They want 51 grand. It's done 36,000 kilometers. Hmm. It's pretty, pretty decent on the inside. These things, like, they do mileage pretty well. I've seen a lot of like old, like like fairly cheap 35 GDRs, like 20 grand ones and stuff like that over here in Japan, like 2013 edition ones, right? Or 2012 ones. And like, you know, they've done like 160,000 Ks and they still like, they age really, really well. They look pretty good. Anyways, all of that aside, we have a 32 GTR here, gunmetal gray on some old Nismo LM wheels. $32,000 and it's done 85,000 kilometers. Relatively clean. Looks like the passenger seat's got a few tears in it. That's not too bad and too expensive to fix. Pretty clean, all in all. Not bad. Another 35 here. They want 45 grand for this one roughly. It's done 107,000 kilometers. Hmm, not bad. And over here looks like it doesn't have the wide fenders, so I'd say this is a GTST. Let's have a look. It's done 63,000 kilometers and it says ask for a price. 
That's a bit, hang on, 280 MR, shut up, no. Oh my God, there was like only seven of these made. That's insane. If you guys don't know about the 280MR, um, so this was kind of like, I guess like a rival to the GTRs. They made these as a way to compete like with a cheaper shell and, and stuff like that. It's a 2.8 stroked RB25 and it's all wheel drive as well. Um, it's pretty much, it's like a GTR, but it's not a GTR because it's not wider and stuff like that. It's a GTST shell. This is so cool. There's literally like only like a small number of these made, like seven or ten or something. That's so cool. I wonder how much they want for this. I bet you it'll be like 60 grand or something like that. And the interior is so mint. It's so weird seeing this car because it literally is a GTST inside and out. That's so crazy. It has a different gauge cluster there though. You can see in the center console there, it's got like three different gauges there, kind of similar to the GTR. That's so cool. I've never seen one of these in the flesh before. Literally, there's such a small number of these. It's almost impossible you'll ever see one. That's so cool. Google that later, guys. That is ridiculously cool. This is so rare. So, so, so rare. Gosh. I'm kind of mind blown by that. I'm super mind blown. All right. That's amazing. Um, let's look at another 30. Th I can't stop looking at this. My God. See, this is the thing. Everyone gives R33s crap, but when they've got super rare, cool things like that that were never done with the 32 chassis or anything like that, it's like, come on, guys. You'd appreciate the 33. All right, so we've got a 33 GTR here. You can see much wider in the front end and the fenders on the front and the rear. They want 53 grand for this one. It's done 88,000 kilometers. And overall, it's pretty clean. It needs a wash, although it's very hard right now. Pollen is settling on everything coming into spring. That's what this kind of yellowy dusty stuff is on all of our cars you can kind of see that there that's pollen literally i'll show you my car at the end of the video it's covered in it too and i only washed it yesterday anyways pr pretty clean relatively clean i don't see any major issues or anything like that loving the volk tes the rays let's look at this 33 they want 52 grand for this one 54,000 kilometers nice white one it's pretty nice on tes as well no, you can't go wrong with bronze TEs. They do look good. ABC Spec 2, you can fit a fist up in the top here. That's fine. It's a GTR. It's meant to be rallied, right? <laughs> oh, man. It's nice. All right. So now we're getting into the 34s. We've got this beautiful white one here. Oh, boy. The price. Oh, man. I love the Advent GT wheels, though. It's giving me some Yashio factory vibes right now. 85 grand. 139,000 kilometers. Far out, this thing's cool. The seats and stuff, is this a V-spec? It is, <laughs> Look at that, your boy's learning. V-spec, 34. That also explains the price tag. V-specs are a lot more. I was gonna say, if that was just like a standard edition, that, that would be crazy, like either almost no kilometers or mileage on it, or um, a little bit overpriced, but that's actually pretty fair for a V-spec, if I was to be honest. There's this crazy, clean far out that looks good bayside blue 34 gtr i can see the price tag already on this too nice white wheels match good with that it's a v-spec too just by looking at the seats 87,000, 95,000 kilometers so 87k for this bad boy and yeah like i said v-spec as well that's good these guys got two v-specs here loving the small nardi on there that's like a 250 nardi on that far out OEM OEM GTR wheels like the top uh, the top secret OEM version sick they they suit those cars way more than I think like a Nardi classic does nice 35 they want 62k for this and it's done 43,000 kilometers and that's pretty fair isn't that insane 35s are now cheaper than these it's crazy cool all right so this one over here they want 77 grand for it it's on 106,000 kilometers Interesting. This one looks like a V-Spec too. It's got a fair few more modifications than before. It is a V-Spec. You can see it there. You can barely see it because it's against the wall. Yeah, it's got the V-Spec interior. There's got, they've got three V-Specs here. That's nice. It's got a fair few mods, like I said. Interesting wheel choice. That's a, a much cheaper option one than the rest of them, probably because it's so heavily modified. See in the rear there, they've done some weird stuff with the wing and shortened the wing and stuff. 
that actually devalues the GTRs. 106,000 Ks. That's not too bad. I'd buy that and freaking go nuts on it. Modify it like crazy. Man, there's so many cool cars here. That's good. I still can't get over this. This is my favorite car. Guys, tell me in the comment section, what is your favorite car that you've seen in this yard so far? If you say Prius, please unsubscribe. I'm joking. I love you and your car choices. There's nothing wrong with liking a Prius because I've seen some pretty cool Priuses here in Japan. But I think this is cool. This is my favorite, hands down. A 280 MR, seeing it in the flesh. Wonder if I could convince the guy to let me take this on a test drive. Oh, it's got no plates. Nah, rip, rip me. But still, this is super cool. So there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this insight into what cars are selling for here in Japan at Japanese car yards. I'm definitely mind blown still by that 280 MR. That is such a find. Like I said, there were so low numbers of those made, like five or 10 or somewhere around that vicinity. I'm gonna Google that later and just get some proper stats, but it's mind blowing to be able to see that in the flesh. They're such a cool car. Anyways, that aside, I hope once again, you enjoyed this video. Make sure you smash that like button. Leave us a comment, what was your favorite car here? And I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. Jamata.